Good day, listeners and viewers. Welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio program. We're glad to have you with us. My name is Jonathan, and I actually have a friend on the line. I've got Derek Thompson, and so Derek, welcome to the program. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. Yeah, now before we dive into uh, what I'm hoping and expecting to be a great conversation about some stuff that you're doing through uh, an organization that you're part of, um, I want to let our listeners know, as we do every now and then, that we're a listener-supported program. And so the way that you're hearing us or seeing us is just because we've had incredible, generous partners come alongside and support this ministry. And, you know, uh, especially as we are starting to get into uh, kind of the end of the year months and we're planning for our 2022 uh, lineup of guests and topics and all of that, um, we would really encourage you and ask you to support this ministry because it, it helps us to make plans for for uh, expansion and how we can continue to broaden uh, our reach for those who would want to have this information. So you can go to puresexradio.com and click on the donate link. Or another way that's really easy for helping others find what we are doing is just to rate and review the podcast after you've listened. So please uh, rate and review, um, and we would be grateful for that. So Derek, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, TFC Global? Mm -hmm. So TFC Global is an organization you're connected with, and, and I'd love for our audience to just know what is TFC Global and what does the organization do? Yeah, um, that's a great question. In fact, I just recently joined TFC Global, and um, my uh, love for this ministry, I feel like it's gone from zero to 60. You know, I um, joined in February, but uh, TFC Global is a, a beautiful ministry that um, originally started as a chaplaincy ministry to truck drivers. And I think it began up in Canada and then came down to the U.S., and um, they, uh, they have this beautiful ministry just reaching out to, to truck drivers and um, had chapels all across the United States, a really beautiful thing. And uh, recently, really, I wanted to take the chaplaincy ministry to the next level and uh, now is a highly um, certified training for chaplains um, that obviously minister in truck stops uh, across the country. Uh, but also are trained to go into um, law enforcement places, into uh, truck companies, and, you know, really just into the community. So uh, TFC has been doing some amazing work the past, I don't know, 70 years now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe tell us a little bit about how you and your life intersected with TFC Global. How did that come about? Yeah, so my, my background is in anti-human trafficking work. I've been doing that now for uh, a little over 16 years um, had been uh, doing that actually in Florida, uh, recently moved to Pennsylvania where I connected with Ron, who's the president of TFC Global. And uh, what I found out is that TFC, because they were involved in the truck industry and, you know, working in truck stops and uh, places like that, they had actually been combating human trafficking for these past 70 years. Most of those years, they didn't even know that they were combating human trafficking. Um, they, they just were. Um, and then recently, though, had had discovered more of a need um, uh, to want to put some more resources and, and uh, energy into making a difference when it comes to human trafficking. So that's how we initially kind of connected. And where did your uh, where did your passion for helping in that space of anti-human trafficking kind of come from? Do you have. Was there a light bulb that went off? Was there a personal connection to the issue? What what kind of got you into this for 16 years? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so uh, it was a seminary. I went to Fuller Theological Seminary, and I was going to be a uh, – I, I went to seminary to get a Master of Divinity and then hopefully become a pastor or uh, possibly a missionary. And it was my second quarter at Fuller. I had to, I had one elective left, uh, you know, in filling out my class. There was an, one elective. My student advisor said, hey, Derek, I think you'd like this course called Children at Risk. You know, it's a new class that we're offering. Why don't you, you know, kind of fill out your schedule that way? And it's, you know, one of those ironic things because something that just kind of was added at the last second as a, you know, um, ended up changing my life forever. <laughs> and, uh, it was the Children at Risk class. I read a, a thin book for that class, a 63-page book, and there was overviewing, you know, an overview of different ways children are at risk in the world. And chapter five of that book 
was children of the sex trade. Is it possible mm. to be born a second time? And the title alone is what really changed my life. I read that time and it just like, it felt like a sucker punch to the gut. You know, it just like, I had a very strong emotional reaction and just couldn't believe uh, that something like this is actually happening in the world. So that's actually what started my, uh, my venture into anti-human trafficking. Yeah. Well, this year, uh, and, and just for our listeners to know, I've actually, I've actually known Ron for some years. Our, our ministry has been connected to, to, to Ron's work up there in the, in the Northeast. And, um, so it was kind of cool. Some things that started to come together this year when, when you came on board, um, with TFC Global, um, is some ideas started to percolate about maybe a potential partnership. How can we maybe sort of put our heads together, put our ministries together in a way that could help even more men in that space who are dealing with all kinds of sexual brokenness issues. Can you take us through a little bit of what happened in that? And then maybe we can talk a little bit about what that uh, partnership has uh, become. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the, what happened, so in investing in anti-human trafficking work, uh, the, the more you get involved in it, the more you learn and become educated. One of the things that you'll eventually come up against is uh, the need for good intervention work when it comes to the buyer demand. You know, so sex trafficking is a business. It's a, a, an illeg illegal business happening all over the world, making billions of dollars and is the primary incentive for pimps and traffickers to do what they do. And so you see this, this, this big you know, gap in our strategy to combat human trafficking when you look at the buyer demand and what's actually really happening that would help men get free from consumer mm -hmm. sexual beliefs and behaviors. And so that's where Ron brought me on to really take that up. And as he brought me on to, to say, hey, Derek, you know, let's tackle this best way we can. Uh, the the partnership that he already had with Be Broken was just such a natural <laughs> connection. Um, and the workshop was such a beautiful thing that's happening in Texas and Florida and had been in Pennsylvania. But the first thing I said is, hey, we need, let's bring this back to Pennsylvania. And we also have chaplains in other parts of the country. It'd be nice if we could maybe even one day have this expand to different parts of the country. So I think that is... Um, that's key is to find, you know, what, what people, I think, who aren't as familiar with this issue, um, what they don't understand is that there are resources and, and uh, ministries that actually work, that actually help get men free. And one of the lies we can believe is that, well, it's impossible. You know, it, you know mm. men are never going to change or you just, freedom isn't possible. And that's obviously just not true. And as you're, I know, as you can well attest, freedom is possible. It doesn't mean you don't have to put in, you know, hard work. The people who have created uh, this behavior over a long period of time, it, certainly it takes hard work. But man, the, you know, freedom is possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and that is the name of our workshop, Gateway to Freedom. Yes. <laughs> and so as, as we came together, it just seemed like a, a perfect fit for then you guys to develop what you're calling the Gateway to Freedom Foundation. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit more about what all that includes? We can certainly talk about the, the workshop aspect and let people know kind of what that's about. But you guys are wanting to put a little bit more under that umbrella yes. of the Gateway to Freedom Foundation. And, and tell us also maybe... Uh, how you're going about maybe, uh, lack of a better word, targeting the guys that would benefit from this, uh, mm -hmm. these resources that you're putting together? Yeah, great question. So, yeah, Gateway to Freedom Foundation is, an, an, is the anti-human trafficking initiative of TFC Global. So that's um, what the Gateway to Freedom Foundation is. And our, our primary uh, mission or goal is to free every person from consumer sexual beliefs and behaviors. That's uh, what, what, what we're after, which for us in anti-human trafficking work is another way of saying that is ending the demand for commercial mm -hmm. sex. So um, that's our, you know, our great purpose that we run to every single day at and we'll, we'll exhaust ourselves to, to solve that.
problem. And what that looks like for us is a couple things. Uh, what 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 we see is missing in in this work right now is what we call a comprehensive approach to combating the demand. And so there's a lot of uh, things out there right now that would say, the, hey, this is an anti-demand strategy, but they're usually pretty simplistic in what they're really doing. So it's usually like a campaign, for example. You know, there'll be a, a campaign that is telling uh, people don't buy sex, you know, and where that's, a, you know, that's nice to, to, to put that out there. It's good to do something rather than nothing. It's really not taking the demand seriously. And so Gateway to Freedom Foundation, uh, we're uh, creating a comprehensive approach uh, to combat this. And simply what that means is that um, we, we do believe in accountability, that we need to raise the penalties uh, on those who are uh, paying for prostituted people, you know, raise the penalties for buyers. In fact, the buyers have told us that that is the, a key strategy, <laughs> that if you make it more... Mm -hmm. um, costly, it will um, deter the behavior. Uh, but then to intervention, you know, we don't want to just raise the penalty and then not give intervention. And again, we see this happening. We, we see some places that are cracking down on the buyer demand and then no, no bridge to resources that would actually help men get free or, or whoever's struggling with this get free. And so that intervention piece is really, really crucial and where we partner with you on and, um, and some other agencies as well. We want to make sure that intervention is possible for every single person. Um, and then awareness. There's a lot of uh, cultural myths and barriers that actually keep people from seeking freedom. And a lot of the times, you know, the church, we, I've heard this so much now in, in my work, it's amazing how uh, the church, the local church, actually has become one of those barriers for people um, sitting mm -hmm. in their local church and not feeling that that is a safe place for them to say, hey, you know what, I'm really struggling with this and, you know, or, or let me access the resources that I know will help me because then I'm kind of like outing myself, you know, and, and if we want to make some difference in this, we've got to create ways in, within our culture that makes it easier for people to um, access these resources that would help them get free. And then lastly, the prevention piece, we, we've got um, parents and an adult generation that I would say, really, we don't know how to talk to our children about pornography, about consumer sex. So the, uh, you know, the, the typical thing we do is try to ignore it you know, or, or not talk about mm -hmm. it. And so if we can equip our, our parents and our um, pastors and teachers and uh, youth pastors uh, how to do this in a better way, then we have a w much better chance of actually preventing uh, the behavior to begin with. So. Yeah, that's great. You know, as you were talking about that, uh, kind of raising the accountability, but at the same time, time trying to provide avenues mm -hmm. for, for help. Yes. Uh, it made me, the first thing that popped into my head is that's the, uh, that's the beautiful tension that a believer in Jesus Christ is supposed to carry between justice and mercy, Amen. right? Amen. We're told that Jesus was full of grace and truth. It's like there's this there's this really difficult kind of balancing act that we're to do that says, absolutely there is there's justice here. We there needs to be a sense of this is wrong. This is hurting people. This there needs to be accountability for that. And at the same time, when there is repentance on those buyers' parts, there needs to be an avenue to be able to say there's grace, there's there's restoration, there is transformation available to you. And so tell us a little bit of what that, what maybe even that you've experienced in your own work in this field for 16 years. Have, have you seen the reality that transformation can happen on the demand side when, when people will repent of their sinful behaviors as it relates to buying sex. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, another, I think another myth is that men, um, that, that relates to this is that men don't care uh, about this issue or, or they, uh, or they want to avoid, or they have, you know, if you talk about, um, consumer sex, that they're going to have kind of this like negative view or something. And I've experienced the opposite to be true that, if you if you engage men in a healthy conversation about consumer sex, not coming down from a place of judgment or 
or bias or anything like that, but really talking to men about the way that consumer sex is harming us as, as individual men, as how it harms our family and how it harms people in our community, that men are more than willing to engage in the conversation and with this idea that there is then hope and freedom uh, for those that are struggling with it. It really is the approach where we have found that in places that it's just strong accountability, you know, high accountability saying, you know, this is, um, we're, we're no longer going to tolerate this behavior. And it's really strong there without the intervention piece or the engaging men in healthy conversation and, and bridge. Then all that does is creates more shame and creates more hiding, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, more, more secrecy, secrecy right? which is the, you know, which yeah. if you're wanting to combat demand, that's the, you know, the kryptonite of that, you know, you don't, you don't want to create more shame and more secrecy. And that's what accountability without intervention uh, does. Mm. Um, you know, if I was, you know, so one, two, I've experienced that in my life when I was getting free. Um, I needed, I needed the hope and the grace that, that let me know that, Hey, this is, yeah, this is possible. I can do it. And it's, it's good for me. So if it was just, you know, judgment and, and, uh, yeah, high accountability, then I would have been, I, I too would have said, Hey, I've got to hide this at all cost. You know, it is, yeah. it's not safe for me to, to expose this behavior. So I'm going to hide it, which then would have just created, you know, creates a vicious cycle. Now, do you see any dangers if that balance gets swung the other direction? If there's an imbalance to say, hey, listen, there's all this um, love and grace mm -hmm. and, you know, opportunities for transformation, but no accountability. Yeah, absolutely. Are there, yeah. Are there dangers that way, too? Yes. And I, I love framing it that way, that these two things have to be at, at a good tension with each other. You know, you need you need a good balance between these two. But honestly, um, for many, many decades, and I, I don't even know how far back it goes, but for a long, long time, um, we were operating with zero to no accountability. You know, when it comes from legally, legally speaking, yeah, men were yeah. not being held accountable for, uh, for buying, you know, for paying for prostituted people and the harm that that was actually really call, uh, causing. And so that's always been an issue. It's been, it's been hard. And um, I think from a societal perspective, to to hold men accountable for uh, paying for prostituted people and for uh, consumer sex. And I think for the most part, those who that have engaged in that behavior have tried hard to pass the blame on everybody else, you know, <laughs> and so, and, and not take any responsibility. So, and um, these are things that we kind of hear too, you know, you'll hear like the excuses. I've gotten used to hearing them over the years now uh, like boys will be boys, you know, that's a way to not take any responsibility. This is just, you know, what it, what it means to be a man, or this is just what boys do. So it's not my fault. Um, prostitution is the oldest profession in the world. You'll hear that quite often. Um, and all kinds of different things like that, that are essentially saying, Hey, I, we don't want to take responsibility for, for this behavior. We're not responsible for it. Um, you know, we're just trying to meet a need here and there. So the need to raise the accountability is there. And as, mm -hmm. uh, as a society mm -hmm. and, and local uh, jurisdictions, we all should say, yeah, let's, let's, let's um, make, make it known that, Hey, we really do care about this and this behavior is harming people. So we're going to take it seriously while again, at the same time, a lot of grace uh, intervention uh, restoration. It's not different, just real quick. It's not different what we're actually doing with trafficking victims. It's actually the same approach. We we have now over the past couple decades have learned, hey, one, let's stop arresting victims, right, uh, of sex trafficking mm -hmm. and, and, um, and provide intervention resources for them, you know, provide a, an opportunity for them to, uh, to get healing and freedom and, and the services that they need because um, uh, yeah, because they need that. And so it's really doing the same thing, but this now just focused on the buyer demand. Yeah. So now let's try to address <clears throat> some of our audience that I'm sure is, is maybe just saying, listen, all this stuff about 
prostitution, buying sex. Um, man, you're you're in a realm I'm not even dealing with. I mean, I've never paid for sex. I mean, my problem is porn. Right. So I, I think I'm just going to turn the podcast off because this has nothing to do with anything that I'm dealing with. Can you help us understand the connection between human trafficking and sex trafficking and pornography? Yeah. These two, that's why we talk about consumer sex, because there's different forms of that. And every form is connected to sex trafficking in some way or shape or form, um, and definitely connected to sexual exploitation. And uh, what's interesting about pornography is that, um, one, it's, I think, almost without fail, every person's first experience with consumer sex. Our first experience is going to be with pornography before, mo most likely, before prostitution or any other type of consumer sex out there. And so pornography plays a key role because it's already, you know, it's like the gateway drug, <laughs> um, uh, the gateway avenue. And, uh, but, but it's also playing a very important role in, that, um, in the way that it's marketed to men, it, 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 to society, um, making it okay, and, and even mm -hmm. creating some of those built-in justifications um, that's important then to then transition into paying for prostituted people or or whatever. So there's that aspect of it that it that uh, pornography can lead to um, other forms of paying for sex, and it's usually our first uh, four way uh, four way into that um, behavior. But then secondly, uh, traffickers certainly they're they're looking to make money any way they can. And pornography is a great way for them to make money. So the idea that there aren't sex trafficking victims in pornography is, is a terrible myth. Um, there are plenty of sex trafficking victims that are being used in pornography, are also being sold in prostitution, and are also in our adult venue um, places around the world. So traffickers aren't just saying, no, there's only one, you know, we're only going to try to make money one way in this uh, Mm -hmm. in this industry, any and always. Um, in fact, we, I just read a report uh, about the dating, um, the, the, the dating sites, you know, the sugar daddy dating sites, another great mm -hmm. avenue for pimps and traffickers uh, to make money. And so um, mm -hmm. they will use any and every uh, possible means, you know, massage parlors. I, I could go on. There, there's, yeah. there are no shortage of ways that people would try to make money by exploiting another person. And I like the fact that you guys are saying the, the one of the key elements to um, changing this, to, to, to radically transforming this is by focusing on the demand side. Yes. And I also like the fact that, that the approach that you're taking, it doesn't matter what type of consumer. Yes. Uh, behavior somebody's involved in, whether it's prostitution, whether it is uh, pornography or whatever else, the 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 principles for change, the principles for hope, mm -hmm. are going to be the same no matter what. Can you, for right now, can you maybe just even uh, think about you know the the guys in our audience right now mm -hmm. that maybe hey they're still carrying their shame. They've got their secret that nobody knows what they've been doing, whether it's pornography or anything else. Um, with your experience and just also with the, the resources that you guys are providing, what would you say to those guys out there that are just, they are so, you know it, they're, they're gripped with fear. They're struggling to think that, man, I, I'm listening to these guys. I mean, some of this sounds good. I'd love to think that there is a possibility that maybe something could be different. But you know what? I've been burned before when I tried to confess to somebody. Mm -hmm. I keep going back to the same well over and over again, and, mm -hmm. and no matter how many promises I make to God or myself. What would be some words of encouragement or hope that you would give to those guys out there that might help them take that next step towards freedom? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say, which is uh, to me the most important, is that uh, they're not alone. You are not alone. Uh, we, So many other people have 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 been in your shoes, uh, know exactly what you're going through, have experienced the shame, the multiple times failing, the feeling trapped. And there's a community of us that have experienced freedom 
and and restoration and healing and are still striving to to maintain our sexual integrity and um, you can connect with those communities there, there's communities of men that are that are in the journey uh, with men just like you and please join those communities um, and one great way is to connect with be broken um, one of our our the one resource that we offer and I think you're partnering with them as well and I just love this resource I'm I've been telling everybody about it, but it's the Live Free Community app and uh, such yeah. a great way to connect and talk about a low risk step to take to then uh, enter a community of like minded men who are at every different stage in this journey um, and supporting one another in, in getting free. So that's the that's the main thing is that you're not alone and um and and freedom is still possible, no, no matter how bad, you know, we all think we have it the worst, right? I think that's a, just a syndrome of humanity is that we will we'll always think that, no, my situation is the worst. No, nobody else can touch what I've been through. And yet then you get in community with other men and you go, oh, wow, you were, you, you had the same struggles or very similar struggles that I had. And um, so, yeah, freedom is possible. So, yeah, why don't you uh, share with us some of the resources, actually, that are part of uh, what you guys are doing with the Gateway to Freedom Foundation um, and, and how guys can get connected with those to take their next step towards freedom. Yeah, everything centers around our what we call our pathways to freedom. So another, <laughs> another uh, way of just saying <laughs> Gateway to Freedom, Pathways to Freedom. But everything for us centers around uh, our Pathways to Freedom resources, intervention resources, and uh, right now we, we offer three things. And uh, the first is the Live Free Community app. And um, as we said, that's our low risk, high reward option for men. Because we, we know, again, there's, there's serious barriers that would prevent men from um, accessing any resource, even admitting that they have a, a problem. Those are serious bar barriers. For us, the app is, is the, the, the lowest barrier you know, to, to join. And what I tell men is, um, one, you have really nothing to lose. It's a very low cost. And you can enter that community and you could be a fly on the wall for a little bit and just see what's going on and, you know, dip your toe in the water and see if it, see what it's like. That's, that's what that app is, full of all kinds of really good um, information and community and all that. So um, the Live Free app, and then we offer the Gateway to Freedom workshop, again, in, in partnering with, with you all, bringing it back to Pennsylvania. Um, we're going to be offering that multiple times a year. Uh, November is the, the next one kind of on our uh, calendar. And uh, we're really excited about this. And I say this uh, to men, you know, um, I, I read a, a stat that said one-third of active buyers of consumer sex wish they could stop. And... I know that's a point of time reference because at some point, every man who's consuming sex at, at one point in their life is going to say, you know what, I want to stop this behavior. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I'm mm -hmm. going to look for a way out. But one third at the time of this study said they, they uh, highly agree they wish they could stop. And I feel mm -hmm. the, the workshop is really for those men who are ready to get free. If you are ready to get free and you're not, you know, thinking, well, well maybe it's still not a problem. Maybe, you know, and you're, if you're not him and Holland about it, you know, and you're, you're serious, then come to the workshop. The workshop is a, you're, people that, that go to the workshop, they are taking a definitive step to get free. And they are saying, and then you've got a community that is saying, we are going to, we're going to be there with you every step of the way. You know, we are also going to mm -hmm. help ensure your freedom and, and and all that. So we have the workshop. And then lastly, we offer a resource directory that's full of all kinds of resources, books and podcasts and everything. And that's for, you know, hey, th there's a lot of really great stuff out there. So if if the app isn't, you know, you're not ready for the app, you're, you, you can't do a workshop, um, here are some other resources that you can kind of learn on your own if you want to get some more information, get some more research in um, and, and that. So what everything else we do really at Gateway to Freedom Foundation is to is to bring people to these resources and and also help people understand um, 
why these these resources are so necessary and and how they can be helpful. So. And so, where where can people go to find all of those resources? Yeah, so our uh, website um, has all that. And it's uh, gatewayff.org. Gatewayff.org. Yeah, and we'll be sure to add that in the show notes for today. But Derek, thank you for the work that you've been doing for a long time in this space, and uh, for the work that you're doing specifically now through TFC Global. We appreciate uh, what you're doing and for being with us today. Hey, right back at you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, listeners, uh, go to gatewayff.org, dot .org or dot .com? Dot .org. Dot .org, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, go to gate, gatewayff.org uh, to get all those resources, and uh, we're glad that you've been with us, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio program. Take care. 